All righty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a full gear review. Cheap name or pay per view there, full gear and the designs, it was all the gear over the eyes of the wrestlers or whatever, little corny, little amateur looking, in my opinion. There. I'm about half and half on the show kind of deal. Some stuff was okay. You had some trash on it, though. The buy-in match. Serena Deeb versus Allison K. This was okay, I guess. A throwaway women's match with another company's belt on the line. No build, no nothing. It was throwaway ish, I guess. First official pay per view match Kenny Omega defeated Hangman Page. Um, Kenny Omega's entrance, it was two Japanese women with brooms or whatever. Apparently, this was a big reference to a video game. Which game? I have no clue there. Um, can't, like, Kenny Omega keep his obsession with games separate from wrestling? You know what I mean? Like they were explaining the cleaner nickname or whatever. Apparently because he would blow in, in uh, he was probably blowing something else there, but he was blowing in the video game cartridges to clean them like Nintendo. <sighs> like every kid did that with the Nintendo. Apparently because Kenny did that, to clean the games. That's why they call him the cleaner. That's that's his nickname is based off of video games or whatever. Can you imagine Hulk Hogan, a serious real wrestler back in the day there talking about video games as his big inspiration or whatever? When I was young, brother, I used to blow in the games, dude. They called me the gamer, brother. Could you imagine Hogan like this? You know what I mean? And people were complaining about Rusev and his video game storyline. People say it's dumb. It's stupid because it's about video games. Kenny Omega's whole life seems to revolve around games or whatever. You know, it's pretty lame, this guy, is shtick of wanting to jack off the games and the Japanese or whatever. The, the match itself was okay, a good enough match or whatever, but it's not as good as people try to make it out to be. The guy just moves around like a goof. Too much. I don't want to sound like Cornette, but it's true. The way he looks and the goofiness, and it just takes away from the match. And there's a lot of doing the same shit. The knee strikes time and time again. The other guy just keeps trying to go for the clothesline, and it's, you know, it's very repetitive. The matches. I don't see. The big seven star sensation. I don't see a superstar here. He's more like an autistic guy or something. The way he operates there. The, the fixations on the games there. Dressing up like Princess Jasmine or whatever. The obsession with the Japanese. The, the way he talks. And they say during the match, oh, he's an introvert. Uh, you know, maybe he's a little weird, this dude or something. You know, because normally <laughs> a real star wrestler, it's not about video games there. But the match was okay, I guess. Second match, Orange Cassidy defeated John Silver, a little midget guy or whatever, so... You had some comedy stuff 
the hands in the pockets, then the guy goes inside the pockets and rips out the pockets, puts it in his mouth or whatever, and I guess this was supposed to be very funny or whatever. <laughs> They're so hilarious, these modern wrestlers there. So hilarious. So then the match got a bit more serious, a bit more wrestling for five, six minutes, and it was done there. This was not a pay-per-view worthy match. It was supposed to be on the buy-in to begin with, and that's where it belonged there. Not worthy of pay-per-view. Why these fans were crying for this to be on the pay-per-view is beyond me there, but... Third match, Cody Rhodes um, versus Darby Allin for the TNT title. Darby Allin defeated Cody Rhodes. This was a good enough match, I guess. Some of the parts were okay. When Cody did some kind of arm thing and threw him on the ramp, I enjoyed that move or whatever. Um, but I can't take this Darby Allen guy seriously. He's just way too small. His face, the paint, the skater boy gimmick there, tights with shorts on top of his tights or whatever. Some kind of weirdo guy there, some kind of alternative rock skater guy, whatever the fuck he is there. Kind of looks more like a gay stripper, his face, to be honest. I have a hard time taking him as a serious champion wrestler. Me, personally, there. But when the match was done, they had a good enough match. But then Cody Rhodes made it look silly and weird. He gets down on one knee and presents the belt to him. Looks like he was proposing marriage, for God's sakes, down on one knee and gave him the belt the way he did it. It just looked very fucking lame or whatever. And then Taz comes out. He's like, get me a bag because I'm going to bar for something like this. Enough with the emotion and the crying because Cody does that every fucking match. And it's getting pretty phony and lame at this point there. Um, and then they got beat up or whatever by Cage and Ricky Starks. And then Big Will Hobbs made the save. Will Hobbs! A complete unknown Will Hobbs. This guy came out like a month ago. He made the save. A big hero, apparently. Nobody knows who he is, the hero that nobody asked for or whatever. He came out to save, I think, Moxley a few weeks ago or something like this. And then he wasn't even on the show, wasn't on Dynamite for like a month or two. And he shows up at a pay-per-view to save Darby Allin. Like, who the fuck is this guy there? Nobody knows who he is, <laughs> and he's not even wrestling on this show. He comes out to save people. Okay, fuck, what the fuck is this? But anyway, there, Darby Allin, some of the AEW fans like him. They should be happy he won the belt, but the way Cody Rhodes got down on one knee, it just looks stupid and silly. It, takes away from the match, and then Darby Allin gets his ass kicked after he wins, or whatever. <laughs> but, um, fourth match, Hikaru Shida defeated Nyla Rose, and this was just a bad wrestling match, low-quality wrestling, or whatever. It was slow, it was cheap. I was glad it's over way too long and just not good. Fuck. Fifth match, the Young Bucks defeated FTR. This was an okay match, I guess. You know, Meltzer was probably enjoying this, probably gave it six stars. Me, I just thought it was a long-ass match, you know what I mean? Very long. 
Um, there wasn't as many dives kind of deal because FTR don't do that stuff. But like, it was kind of halfway between circus and wrestling. There was still some circus stuff with the Young Bucks, but all these moves and and it finishes with just a plain super kick. One of the FTR guys tried to do a dive and it backfired. And the other one was barefoot with a, a like a messed up ankle, gives him a cheap looking barefoot super kick. And that's how the match ended. So that's one of the problems, all these maneuvers head bumps and they get right back up and then it finishes with a weak looking super kick you know what i mean um, and the young bucks the, they don't really do wrestling you know like apart from a hundred arm drags at the beginning of the match it's mostly strikes repetitive strikes kicks and dives and there's like barely any real wrestling just weird unorthodox stuff or whatever and super kicks like do these guys actually know how to wrestle or whatever like like they don't know how to sail for fuck's sake but during the match at some point they were referencing the backyard wrestling that the young bucks have done how low budget does it look when they're talking about backyard wrestling? Oh, Nick jumped on the fence and split his leg open. Uh, doesn't that look amateurish? They're all oh, great backyard wrestling. Uh, hurt his leg on the fence. Oh, <laughs> it's uh, just seems very amateur there, but. The Young Bucks won. They won their big dream match. Honestly, I expected more stuff. It just seemed like a plain match to me compared to what they normally do. And uh, it just had a weak finish, I think, there. Oh, it's because they never do dives and they did a, a dive and gave them super kick. <laughs> It all makes sense in the story arc. Long-term storytelling. Hey, Doug. But really, it's just a, a match that's like really long with no real wrestling. The other guys were doing wrestling, FTR there, but... Young Bucks, there's no moves. There's no real wrestling. It's just flip, 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 flip. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too old for this modern wrestling there. In the sixth match, Matt Hardy defeated Sammy Guevara in the Elite Deletion. And this, I thought, was the best match of the show there. It was Matt Hardy doing his stuff. There was a, mon a monster truck. You had Gangrel in this match there. Hurricane was there, and at the end, it got pretty gruesome when they got into, like, this big garage with a ring there. The chair shot, the final chair shot, it looked like they were going to kill him or whatever. The way they put him on in the garbage at the end, it looked like a, I was watching someone getting killed in a horror movie kind of deal there, but... I thought this was pretty good there, Senor Benjamin driving the truck at the end or whatever. I thought this was pretty good. Seventh match, MJF defeated Chris Jericho, and this was not so good. Coming off the Elite Deletion, it had that filler boring feel to it like a cool down match after a big match or whatever um after seeing elite deletion you look at that it's like oh fuck it just felt boring it was slow like even mjf was slower than jericho that's 50 years old or whatever and then it ended with a guerrero finish 
Jericho with the bat. The other one dives on the ground. Referee distraction and then a roll up. So the match was super, like nothing happened in this match. Super slow with fuck all there. And they rip off Guerrero for the finish, you know, pretty cheap. Um, Jericho, when he was climbing on the ropes and giving him punch, it was like that, like super fake looking there. Some of the fakest looking punches I've ever seen from Jericho. It was weird there. Um, people are going to say the Guerrero finish is okay because Jericho was Eddie's friend, but it's still ripping off WWE. You know what I mean? On one hand, they constantly bash WWE. Oh, uh, we're not going to rely on storylines like WWE. You're conditioned by the WWE to believe this and that. But then on the other hand, they rip them off as much as they can. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and nobody calls them out on it or whatever. But in the main event... John Moxley defeated Eddie Kingston. And this is the main reason I thought the show wasn't worth 50 bucks because of this match. Like, first of all, the match was, it was a I quit match. Ambrose won with the fucking choke finish, some barbed wire with a choke or whatever. But it was like a generic hardcore match there like barbed wire thumbtack the same match we've seen a thousand times it's like i said it was like a tna quality hardcore match it wasn't anything great it was just cheap kind of feel to it with hardcore stuff that we've already seen ten thousand times why would they put this as the main event of a pay-per-view i have no idea just a filler match for the world title just while they wait for Kenny or whatever. This is what this was. And Eddie Kingston, you know, some fans like him because he can cut a bit of promo or whatever, but he's not a good wrestler. The guy looks like a jobber big time. The way he was wearing that outfit or whatever just looked like a complete jobber from an indie fed like straight up like a small time indie fed the outfit and it just seemed like a low quality indie match is what this looked like <laughs> you know what i mean but hey w uh, fuck uh, um, i thought the show was okay i guess if it was an indie pay-per-view, you know it's going to be indie. You pay $9.99 for it. It might have been an okay show there. But for 50 bucks, and, and to claim that this is amazing and that it it's better than WWE, for 50 bucks, I would say that this was a joke. You know what I mean? If that's what it is there, there's a lot of crap. Some stuff was okay, but... Was it an amazing show? No, probably I would rate it as okay, like a 5.5 out of 10 kind of deal or something. But I'm sure Meltzer will give it 25 stars for each match. And every match is going to be claimed that it was amazing and super great. But it's low quality, a lot of it. The best match I thought for the entertainment was the Elite Deletion there, but it's not for me this fair. It's for guys that jack off to the Japanese and Zelda, you know, maybe Kenny Omega. You go to his house. He has men dressed up as Super Mario running around his apartment or whatever. Probably a big pipe sticks out of the ground and... Kenny jumps inside the pipe and does sound effects <laughs> with his mouth or whatever there. And he wrestles with Luigi and 
he ends up with Toad in his bedroom or something like this there, but it might be for people like that. You know what I mean there, but, you know, like I said, okay show, but not an amazing one. I'm not going to claim it was amazing. Until next time, peace. Ha, not worth 50 bucks there. Ha!